Hello everyone, welcome back to Rolling Solo. My name is Adam Smith and today we get to begin the very first part of the playthrough for Descent Legends of the Dark as we move into the world of Tiranoth together. Now if you haven't checked out my unboxing video as well as my setup video which I recently released both of them, I'll put a link to the entire showcase in the top right hand corner right now. Without further ado, let's head right into the hero phase where we left off at the end of the setup video. During the hero phase, the heroes choose the order in which they take their turns. The order can change from round to round, and after all heroes have taken a the turn, they then go ahead and select end phase inside the app. Now you'll see on the card just to the left of the game board here that we have set up that there is an explanation around the hero turn. It shows the different actions that you can take on your turn. The hero turn reference card mentions that during your turn you may perform one maneuver action and two additional actions of your choosing. So you have three actions total but one of them must be a maneuver action and then with the two additional actions you can choose to do exploring, fighting, maneuvering, readying or use a unique action and you could choose to technically do any one of those twice. You're not restricted to only being able to do one action one time. So for instance it states here you have one maneuver already, but you could use your other two additional actions to do two more maneuvers, which will give you a ton of movement. And of course, you're free to choose which of these actions comes first before another. So just to summarize that card, the explore action allows you to interact with terrain or a token. The fight action allows you to attack an enemy within range. Maneuver gains movement points equal to your speed on your hero card or anything else additionally that adds to that speed that you have equipped. You have a ready action to flip a card, which allows you to flip your hero card or any card surrounding your inventory that's double-sided. And then you have a unique action, which is signified by an arrowhead, which will be on a particular card it basically can be used as a unique action. Now on the game board currently we have a couple sight tokens and our current objective inside the app states to investigate the darkness around the lake so we definitely need to interact with these sight tokens and it's worth noting that essentially these don't count as actions when interacting with a sight token so in other words I know on my turn here when I activate Varix I have some uh, maneuver action I can take that maneuver action will give me whatever my allotment and movement speed is which is three so I get three points of movement it's worth noting the second that you are adjacent to one of these sight tokens while you're moving, you must immediately resolve it inside the app and then you can continue on with your turn. So Varix is gonna use two of his three movement points he has available to get closer to the sight token. He's now adjacent. And remember, adjacency is anything diagonal or orthogonal. So at this time, we're gonna go into the app, click on the sight token and see what happens. In order to activate a site token inside the app, we're gonna go ahead and drag Varix's portrait towards the site token we are now interacting with. It says, thick clouds roll in, blocking what little light the moon provided, but as your eyes adjust, the path becomes clear to you. A cry for help echoes in the darkness. Discard this site token. We'll go ahead and hit continue. It says, place tiles 5B, 11B, and two water underlays as it shows in the app here. We'll go ahead and hit continue again there's going to be a placement of a single tree continue again it starts to talk about the terrain most terrain is interactable a hero adjacent to a piece of terrain may perform an explore action to interact with it by dragging from their hero portrait to that terrain terrain can hold different rewards including crafting materials you can learn more about this inside of the rule book so the thing to note about this is those trees are really really useful then it states the pathway winds around the small lake. Place one sight token. Spawn the following enemy. We have our very first enemy dropping in. We have a Fey. And we also have a Berserker landing as well. You are under attack. A hero may perform a fight action against an enemy within range and line of sight. Again, inside of the app itself, we can hold down on a keyword like range to learn how range is actually handled inside the app, which is extremely handy. And then we want to jump back out. We could check out line of sight, for instance. It's worth noting inside the app, there's already a full explanation as to line of sight. You can go to the options menu, click on line of sight when it's available, of course, which right now we're in the middle of a menu system and we have to still continue through. Now once we come out on the other side of that, I can show you what that looks like. 
At the sounds of battle, your companions jump into action. Place the remaining heroes on the highlighted spaces. So we'll have a choice as to where Cyrus is now going to enter into the fray for the hero phase. Our objective is updated, so now we need to just focus on defeating the enemies. During each hero phase, each hero takes a turn. During their turn, a hero can perform actions. And as you can see right here, it's summarizing what I explained just moments ago. After Varix finishes their turn, each other hero may take a turn. So now we have Cyrus in play. We'll be able to use Cyrus during this hero phase. And then we just end the phase in the bottom right hand corner of the app when we're all ready to go. If I hit the uh, gear icon at this point, you'll see line of sight is available. If I click on it again, I can simply click any tile I wish in order to see whether line of sight is drawable. If you see red, that means it's one space away. Orange is two spaces away from the selected tile. And then yellow is three or more spaces away. So at this point, we've gone ahead and set up the map exactly as the app has told us. We also have placed orange bases underneath each of the enemy miniatures with the single notch showing forward, as you can see at the very bottom there. And you can check this inside the app to ensure really the notches are for individuals that are colorblind, have a hard time differentiating between colors for the miniatures. But this is going to be your easy way to reference what's going on inside the app in terms of which ones you're going to be targeting for attacks and effects versus what's on the table. So quickly we can see here, we have a couple site tokens we could still interact with. We have a tree we can potentially explore. We also have some enemies we need to take down. And that is our main objective currently is to defeat the enemies we see. Now, the site token interrupted my movement, and what's really cool around movement is that you still can continue your movement in between doing actions or when you need to interact with a site token because you're adjacent to it. So in other words, I still have one point of movement and I plan to move a little bit closer to the Fae. All right, at this point, I'm pretty happy with where I am currently positioned, but I'm not happy with the weapon I have equipped at the moment. So this leads us into the explanation around the ready action. So when you take a ready action, you're choosing a card that's in front of you for your character and you're flipping it over. It could be your hero card itself, or it could also be a card that's around it, such as a starting weapon card, for instance. Of course, it has to be double-sided in order to actually be able to be flipped. And the purpose of doing this is not only to gain the advantage advantages of whatever's on the opposite side of the card, which you can always quickly look underneath to see what it is. And eventually you'll have those things memorized, but it's also to deal with all kinds of bad conditions that will get thrown at your character throughout the game. Remember the purple, green, blue, yellowish, and red tokens, all those negative conditions that can potentially fall on a hero. Well, they're going to land on these cards and then they're going to trigger and impact your health and different aspects of your character that you really don't want to happen. So what we're going to do for right now, it's pretty clean the example because if we do a ready action right now, there's no tokens involved. We don't have any fatigue sitting on either the hero card or the starting weapon. So when we flip this card over, there's nothing to clean up. But hypothetically, if we had a couple fatigue on this card, as it can have a maximum of two, that fatigue would be removed. If we happen to have one of those conditions that are nasty on this particular card, when we flip it for a ready action, it would be removed. So essentially think of it like the second you flip that card every token on the card goes away. Now the reason I'm doing a ready action is because the River Watch Spear has a better ability for my current position in terms of me doing a strategic attack. It has the ability to do a reach attack which is two spaces away at a higher damage count than the other side did. So for each success I get during my attack it's going to do three damage which can really add up. It also has a damage type on the side here which in this case is Pierce. This might end up being one of the weaknesses of the Fae. We don't know until we actually attack and find out, which could give additional damage to the attack. Now that ready action may seem extremely basic, but I promise you as we get further into the playthrough, you're gonna see how important it is timing wise and strategy wise in terms of managing fatigue tokens and condition tokens on the different cards and knowing when to do that flip and when not to becomes a really cool aspect of the game. With one action remaining for Varix, I think going ahead and attacking this thing would be a wise decision. So let's jump inside the app and I'll walk you through how an attack works. 
So let's head back inside the app here. You'll see portraits in the bottom for both the characters, in this case, that I'm controlling. I'm going to click on Varix's portrait and drag it up to the fade to say I want to make an attack. Next up, it says to select a currently equipped weapon. We know we just did a ready action that flipped it over. So Riverwatch Spear is the one that I have currently equipped. And we jump right into the attack itself. Now, on the screen in the top left, you'll see your character's name. You'll see the equipped weapon. You'll see how much damage it's doing. The damage just doing is also referenced on the card on the table as well you'll see an effect in the middle that just happens to be part of the attack based on the enemy so in this case otherworldly so during an attack suffer one fatigue for each advantage icon which is the plus symbol converted to a success and then in the middle there is where we're going to tick up and down how many successes we end up getting. We have a status button in the center that if you click it, will show all the different statuses you can potentially get. I will show you in a second on the reference card what all those statuses actually do, but everything around it, including the math, is handled by the app. You just simply have to select whether the condition applies or not. In the top right hand corner, of course, you have the health for the enemy. In this case, the Fey is 23 HP. It has a shield icon. So basically every time you make an attack against it, the shield will take away one of the damage, but the rest will go through to the health. Down in the bottom left, you have damage type. So in this case, you can reference what type of damage that your weapon is doing on the card itself, which is on the table. It states pierce. So if that particular damage type happens to be a weakness, of the Fey, when we make an attack, it is going to change one of those question marks on the weakness side to the pierce damage, and it's gonna give us additional damage when we attack because, of course, it's the enemy's weakness. So part of the fun of this game is determining what weaknesses are, or I should say, which weapons and which items you're using against the enemies are gonna cause them to take additional damage, and then adjusting your strategy in order to hammer them into the ground. Now, for those of you that were curious about those status conditions that you can potentially apply to the enemy, they're all detailed out down here for enemy statuses. You have afflicted, dazed, doomed, enfeebled, exposed, and slowed. And all of what they'll do, again, is all handled inside the app. Simply just enabling the actual condition is good enough. You'll see that there's certain weapons that will give one of these conditions. So, for instance, the Riverwatch Spear says, if I spend a surge during my attack, I can add two successes and enfeeble the enemy and enfeeble is one of the conditions so I can throw that condition at the enemy and hope that, that really helps me out enfeeble here says it's a minus 20% enemy attack damage so it's going to impact how much damage they can do back to me so an attack or at least initiating that action is very simple simply just drag your portrait to the enemy you're attacking and then you're going to reference your player board here to determine which die you're rolling for attacking in this case it's the blue die so we'll go ahead and grab that we're going to give it a roll and see what we get and then we'll manage things based on the icon so we have one success and a surge icon to spend well that literally worked out perfect for me because i have one success and i will use this surge in order to trigger this ability on the spear giving me two more successes for a total of three plus being able to add the condition that's fantastic and i don't even have to worry about expending any kind of fatigue here in this situation it does state down here that you can see you have an ability that's available so long as you haven't actually fatigued yourself out completely on it you're able to spend that value so this says two fatigue during your attack add a surge so if i didn't get a surge let's say hypothetically i got two successes on the die and i really want to hammer a lot of damage onto this thing i could take two fatigue on my hero card because that's where the cost is coming from in order to gain this benefit giving me a surge that i could have used on the spear now it's important to note that's just one side example but Think about surges like this. If you have surges with just one, you can initiate just one of the abilities. If I happen to have two surges, I couldn't come to the River Spear and do that same ability twice inside the same attack roll. Not allowed to do that, but I could, if I had two surges, trigger this surge here and this surge down here on the player board. We'll talk more about fatigue a little bit later on because nothing here applies to fatigue at the moment, so it's pretty straightforward. One success off the die and plus two success with the enfeebled. Let's head back to the app and see how much we can put through on this thing. 
Looking back at the app here, we're gonna go ahead and tick this up one, two, and three. Make sure to go into our status here and tick off Enfeebled. This is awesome. I really hope this is going to uh, do some serious damage here. We got eight damage through, okay. And the thing that's unfortunate about that is that the actual damage type we're using, the current weapon we have, is not one of the weaknesses of the enemy. So we don't get any advantages off of that. So we need to kind of keep on trying different combinations to see if we can get the weakness exposed to the point where we can figure out what it is and then use that to our advantage but at this point we've now done three full actions with Varric so he has to stop at this point and I'm gonna have to use Cyrus to come in and handle the rest of the Fey damage hopefully now Cyrus currently has a weapon equipped that has an icon that states four on it for range which is pretty awesome which means he can hit from long distance he's not doing a ton of damage he's only doing two damage every success but still the ability to hit from range is nice especially when you don't get, want to get too close to the enemies. The other advantage to that is I could have Cyrus actually go from where he currently is towards the site token with his maneuver action that he has as part of his three actions. Then I could expose more of what's going on on the right hand side of the board and then use two attacks back to back in order to go after the Fey and hopefully we'll be able to take it down. Now it's important to note that Cyrus does have four movement points. I've only used two of them so far so if I do choose to move any further later on I can do so but because I've moved adjacent to the site token right now, I have to interact with it in the app. So heading back inside the app, we simply drag the portrait for Cyrus towards the site token and we'll resolve it. The pathway around the lake becomes clear. Discard both site tokens. Oh, interesting. So both of them are gonna be off the map and it looks like tile 4B will be placed there. So we'll go ahead and do that in a second. We also have a tree, another place to potentially explore and gather resources from, which is good. We'll hit continue. Oh, we have a zealot that has appeared. So that enemy is needed to be placed on the board as well. Orange base with the one dash and that's it. So let's go ahead and set those up on the table. All right, so the board has filled out even more now. We have more enemy options and our objective is still to defeat all the enemies. So let's go ahead and try and hit that Fey and take it out. Inside the app, we're gonna go ahead and drag from Cyrus for his second action to make an attack against the Fey. And here's hoping that this is a decent attack. Hopefully we get the uh, damage type bang on. The damage type for his Glimmering Wand is a slash damage type. So hopefully that pans out. We'll click on Glimmering Wand and we're gonna go ahead and do ourselves a roll. But first it states here otherworldly. So during the attack suffer one fatigue for each of the advantages that are converted to a success. We gotta remember that as well. Cyrus is rolling an orange die as depicted by the icons with swords. Let's see how we do. Okay, interesting. We have two of these to spend, two advantages. So I have a couple options here based on some abilities on my cards. I have what's called fatigue abilities. So whenever you see the fatigue icon with a number in front of it, that's considered an ability that is all based around fatigue and it is tied to whatever card it's currently on. So the empower one here is really handy because for one fatigue, after you roll, you can convert an advantage to two successes. That's really good. But remember, you have to look at the maximum fatigue you can have on the hero card before being able to see whether you can actually do it. So in other words, make sure you haven't hit your maximum before you try and empower because, well, you can't do it at that point. So right now I can. I have up to two fatigue I could spend here. So I'm going to go ahead and spend one of them in order to convert one of the uh, rolls that we got there for advantage to a success, but then ends up becoming two successes. And then because I haven't hit my maximum, I'm going to go ahead and do it again so I can get as much damage on this thing as possible. So we're going to go ahead and be hitting this thing for four successes. Now I also have the ability to look at this glimmering wand here and for two fatigue after your attack a hero may shift two. Shift two sounds like movement that's because it is. It allows you to ignore the impeded rule which is inside the game which means when you become adjacent to an enemy and you try to move when you're adjacent to it, then you lose all of your movement points. And at that point, if you gain any additional movement going forward, you only get one movement point each time. So it basically hinders you to be side by side because you're basically in constant combat when you're adjacent. But if you use that ability on the card there for Cyrus, I could shift away and ignore that impeded ability. 
Let's head back inside the app. So the only thing I did was to place two fatigue on my hero card to convert both of the advantages to four success total, which is pretty awesome. And in terms of impeded, we'll talk more about that when it actually happens during gameplay. So inside the app, I'm gonna tick this thing up four successes, feel pretty good with that. You can see the status of enfeebled or that condition from the prior attack from uh, Varix is still there. So that's why even if you have an attack that has that condition going forward, there's no need to apply because it only gets applied once it doesn't stack so we're gonna go ahead and hit confirm at this point and see what happens so we did a decent amount of damage and we still haven't exposed any weakness on this thing but it gives me hope that i might be able well ugh, that was a pretty good attack that i just made so i don't know if i'll be able to kill it on the on this next upcoming attack but the good news is you'll notice that if we hit continue and we were to go do another attack, which I'm certainly going to try and do. We'll drag that over for the second time. We're going to use the Glimmering Wand again. We have eight to get through. Seven for the health and one for the shield. I wonder if we can pull this off. Now, it's also worth mentioning here, the otherworldly effect would have triggered that's on screen that states during the attack suffer one fatigue for each converted to a success. So for each of the two symbols I converted, I need to go ahead and add two more fatigue. Now when you suffer fatigue, you get to choose where you place the fatigue. So you'll notice that when I did the empower ability on my hero card, I used fatigue at that point to use the empower and I had to place it on the hero card. But when you suffer fatigue from the app, you actually get to choose where you want to plant that fatigue. It can be on the hero card, it could be on a different card, as long as it has space based on its maximum fatigue to place it. So just for clarity's sake, the last attack action resulted in me taking some fatigue on my hero card because I chose to, to boost up my attack and convert some advantages to successes, but the otherworldly effect should have applied back in that last attack, which would have put two more fatigue in play for me. As you can see, putting it on the Glimmering Wand was the only option because I already maxed out my hero card, and over here I still had a maximum of three. Now, what happens when you reach your maximums? Well, when you reach your maximums, first off, you can't use abilities that need fatigue in order to trigger them. So fatigue abilities like Empower can no longer be triggered anymore. Even if I have the one allotment on the other side, it's not an allotment on the hero card. So I can't use Empower right now at all. The other downside is once I have fatigue across all of my cards at their maximum, so two here and let's say three here for a total of five, any additional fatigue that I suffer going forward goes straight to my damage dial. So let's summarize fatigue really quickly at a high level. So the first thing you can do is convert one of those plus symbols into a success that's considered converting and if you do this it costs a fatigue by default if you want to use a fatigue ability which is right here on this card you must ensure you have the fatigue to spend on that particular card to do it otherwise you can't and lastly if you suffer fatigue from the app telling you to go ahead and suffer it you can then choose where you want to place the fatigue and as I just mentioned, if you get too much of it, it starts destroying your health. So now we're gonna go ahead and roll for our second attack to see how we do. All right, we ended up getting two clean successes. Going back inside the app, I really don't think this is gonna be enough to put us over the hump in order to, uh, to take this thing out, but we might get close. I don't think it's gonna happen though. We'll go ahead and put in two and hit confirm and we've done just three damage. So super close, but not close enough. So this thing's gonna be coming at us. So go ahead and hit continue, and that's gonna do it at this point in time. Both of our characters have fully gone. Now you might be wondering, hey, what about that additional movement you didn't use after interacting with the site token? Well, you can go ahead and continue to use the rest of your movement allotment after you've gone ahead and finished with your site token. You can go ahead and move where you want. So at this point, I'm not moving anywhere, and I did that intentionally. All right, so here's where the pain starts coming. So at this point, the hero phase is done. We can click on end phase, and we're going to go through a run of a number of different attacks coming our way this time. So let's see what happens in the darkness phase. Now, the first thing that's going to happen is a resolving of infection and terror, as well as each hero being able to discard one fatigue that they choose. 
Now, at this point in the gameplay, we have no infection or terror tokens, which are condition tokens, anywhere in play. However, there is talk of this on the reference card in terms of what these conditions can do, and they're not fun. So the first one here at the very top says, when time passes, suffer one damage for each infected card. It's worth noting these conditions can only be applied one to each card. So yes, you could be infected across not only your hero card, but also your glimmering wand and whatever else you're carrying and that can stack and become a real big problem for you but if you can keep it maintained and managed then it won't be so bad but every time the darkness phase is going to trigger you'll resolve your infection which will hit you if you happen to have tokens on cards based on the number of them and then you check your terror so terror is yellow and when time passes suffer one fatigue on each terrified card so there you're going to see your fatigue starting to affect you now how do you clear all this up? Remember when we were talking about the ready action earlier on? This is where it comes in really handy strategy-wise because as you start to accumulate these things, they're gonna, the fatigue especially, it's gonna start locking up your fatigue abilities, which is not good. It's gonna start pushing into situations where your HP is gonna start getting hit really badly. And also condition tokens are gonna linger and constantly hammer you. So the ready action allows you to flip a card and remove every single token off of it clearing you of a whole bunch of grief at least for the moment so i've gone ahead and discarded one fatigue off of cyrus's hero card we have no infection and terror to deal with right now we'll hit continue inside the app and it states that the zealot is going to be going first its target is going to be cyrus it will always let you know what the target is it has an ability here that says mend the fey recovers two health that's unfortunate so we're going to have to go ahead and adjust that and in order to deal with that you can use the interrupt action action um, in that if you click on that button I should say it's not an action but if you click on it inside the app it will actually bring you back to the main screen and you can resolve abilities and things like that and then come back right into this step of the attack or activation now the icons you're seeing on screen are very easy to decipher the first one there in green is the movement that tells you how much movement the enemy has as it tries to get to the target of its attack then how much range it has is in blue with the arrow and then how much damage it's doing on the current attack so let's take a look at the zealot and see what's possible. So if the target of the attack is Cyrus, it looks like the Zealot's not going to have much trouble getting there. So first off, three range away is the first thing to keep in mind before you do your movement. So the Zealot's not going to be silly enough to try and get right adjacent to an enemy. If it has ranged or it's a ranged individual, it is definitely going to stay back as far as its ranged ability will allow, but within its movement limits. So for instance, if it has a range of three, one, two, three, it needs to move one more space forward in order to be within range. Now, in this particular situation, a target was able to be acquired and attacked. Now, let's say you have a situation where you have movement and range mentioned, but it won't be able to reach the actual target it's trying to attack. What happens then? Well, then the enemy is going to go after the next closest hero, and if there's a tie for that, it's going to go after the one that has the least amount of health. If an enemy cannot attack any hero during its activation, though, the enemy moves toward the closest hero who has the least health. All right, we're fully aware that this attack is happening. It's three damage, and at this point, we go to the defensive die for Cyrus. We're rolling this to see how many successes we can get to negate the damage coming our way. So we're going to roll this off, and we got kind of a tilt there, but a relatively flat result. So two successes. Unfortunately, that damage does get through, at least one of it anyway. We blocked two, so the dial went from seven down to six. Heading back inside the app, let's find out who's activating next. It's a Berserker, and the target this time is going to be Varix. It has Bloodlust. It says, after the defense, the Berserker shifts one toward and attacks a second hero if possible. That's pretty nasty. It has a movement of four and a damage of four. Now, one thing that I need to correct right now is I need to give some healing to the Fey from that last activation. So I'm going to show you inside the app exactly where you can go to bump up that health, because you have to do it manually. So you're going to go in and hit Interrupt and then you're going to go ahead and click on the Fey and you'll see that there's some sliders left to right and I'm just going to simply go one two to give it a health boost of two and that's it and then we're just going to drop back out it's as easy as that we hit resume activation and we're right back into the flow again so now we're going to have Varix getting a little bit of action coming from the Berserker let's go and see how this resolves so taking a look at the board right now the Berserker is way up north by itself so it has four movement with four movement it is not getting 
getting adjacent to anybody because it doesn't have range to make an attack. So because of this, it now is just gonna go after the hero that's closest that also has the least health. So in this case, the closest hero is still gonna be Varix because diagonally, this thing can come flying over. So with forward movement, it's gonna move as close as it can to Varix. The Berserker has made it all the way over to Varix, but not close enough to make an adjacent attack. Inside the app, we can now hit done as we move through this. Because there was no after the defense, nothing else is gonna happen here. We'll go ahead and hit done. Now the Fey is gonna go, and the Fey, ugh. Definitely is gonna be able to pull this off. So the target is Varix, it has flying. So while moving, this enemy ignores elevation, terrain, and underlays and cannot be impeded. So all of that stuff, it completely ignores, but it's not gonna matter because it's got range and it's gonna to try to stay that distance away from the enemy anyway. So Varix is definitely getting attacked here, has a movement of four, range of three, and attack of three. So the Fey has shifted positions in order to be three range away from Varix, is gonna make an attack. In terms of line of sight, it's drawn typically from the middle of a square to the middle of another square. As I mentioned earlier, you can check it in the app to see if you're okay, but figures on the game board do not block line of sight, but 3D terrain elements and certain specific ones do. And again, inside the app, you can quickly click on a button to see whether the space you're trying to target, whether it be the enemy attacking you or you attacking the enemy, if it's legitimate line of sight or not. All right, let's see how things go with the defense. We're gonna take a die here, give it a roll, and hopefully I can defend against this stuff. So I got one success and one surge. So I have a surge ability here that says during your attack, add two successes and enfeeble. So that I cannot do right now. I can't resolve that as part of this is not an attack. I do have a surge down here though on my player board. It says add a success and any hero may discard one condition. That's actually a really, really good ability, but I don't have any conditions on anybody right now, so I can't make use of the whole thing, but hey, I'll still take the other success, so that's gonna give me two successes. So poor Varix is gonna take a hit to his health dial, dropping him from eight down to seven. Heading back inside the app, we'll go ahead and hit done, and it states the Zealot slams their staff into the ground and drones a dark prayer. Well, that doesn't sound good. We're gonna hit continue and it moves into the hero phase. Okay, so I got some work to do. The Fey is starting to charge back up. That's really not a good thing. And we're gonna go ahead and do some big time attacks during this upcoming hero phase. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna have Varix maneuver first, and I'm only gonna be using one point of movement because I'm gonna immediately lose all the rest of my movement points the second I get adjacent to an enemy and become impeded. So basically Varix is gonna move one spot north and lose his other two movement points. However, with his reach keyword ability, he's able to still target the Fey, which is the one I'm trying to knock off the board. It seems to be the most nightmarish of them all. And I wanna get that one gone first as we already started to work on it from the beginning before the other ones really got into the fray. So let's go ahead and make an attack and we'll likely be doing another attack if this one doesn't work out. So heading back inside the app, we're gonna have Varix go ahead and attack the Fey. Let's see, we've got the Riverwatch spear and we're gonna go ahead and do ourselves a roll with the blue die. I'll roll this off on the side here so you guys can see it. Oh, we just got a surge. That is the only thing we got in this case. So we can, on the Riverwatch Spear, during your attack, add two and enfeeble. So that's, I mean, they're not enfeebled at the moment. That's another thing to, to mention as well, is the conditions stay until the next time around. So as you'll notice inside the app, the uh, status enfeeble is gone from the prior attacks, but we can put it back on now. So. I'm pretty happy with this. Let's use that surge to get those two successes and the enfeeble. So one, two, and a status of enfeeble. We'll see how this does. Hopefully, come on. Oh, so close, so close. Okay, so two more health is needed, but that's fine. We're gonna do another attack. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna drag this over from uh, Varix over to the Fey. We're still using the Riverwatch Spear. Um, it does state here the otherworldly effect is that we'd suffer fatigue for each conversion we have done, but we haven't done it yet. So we'll go ahead and roll this one for the second attack. And we got two successes without any need to convert anything. That's perfect. So let's go ahead and take those two successes into the app. This should be enough, hopefully. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and hit continue and it states your foe crumples to the ground. Remove the Fey. Thank goodness. All right, so taking a look at the game board, one less enemy to deal with going forward and Varix's turn is done. Uh, so now we're gonna move over to Cyrus and Cyrus can start working on one of the other enemies. 
Now it's worth noting inside the app a couple cool things. First off, you hit the gear and you go to the quest log, you can see a breakdown of the rounds and what happened in each of those rounds if you need to backtrack and double check things. So that's pretty handy. Also, the top right hand button there that has the enemy page here allows you to quickly see which banners relate to which miniatures if you're not sure which miniature you're supposed to be grabbing and also what color base is supposed to be underneath of them. So hopefully that makes things easier. If you wanna switch back to the map view, it's basically just touching on that piece of paper and that's it. So we need to decide what we're going to do with Cyrus. I'm going to have Cyrus head towards that tree so we can interact with it later on. At this point, Cyrus is pretty happy with where he is. He used some of his movement to get close to the tree. Now I want to focus on an attack. So we're going to go ahead and make that attack in the app right now. Inside the app, we're going to drag Cyrus all the way over to the Zealot. And we've got the equipped weapon, the Glimmering Wand we'll be using. Murder says a random enemy adds two damage to its next activation. So this is something that the app's going to actually keep into account. We don't have to deal with this. It's just telling us that a random enemy is going to get two additional hits on their next attack. We're making things a little bit rougher for us, right? And it's possible it could be the Zealot. It could be anybody in play, really. So let's go ahead and do our roll here. We're doing an attack. We're going to be using the orange die. Let's see how it pans out. Wow, we got a little bit of everything on that. I don't know if you guys can see that. We have ourselves a surge. We also have an advantage and a success. That was a really great roll. We have one success already. I'm going to use another fatigue in order to convert one of the advantages I have up there to two successes. So now we have three. And do I have anything I can use a surge on? Yes, down here, add one success. And you may move one fatigue from one card to another. So I'm going to go ahead and move this one over to here because it's still within its maximum of three. And that opens up the ability for me to use in power later on. So now I'm going into this with one success on the die two from the empower conversion and then one from this surge down below so four successes back inside the app we're going to go ahead and click this up four times and now we'll hit confirm hopefully this does a whole bunch of damage oh so good 12 damage there's only six remaining left that was a absolute beast of an attack and we'll hit continue now i want to do this again we are so close to finishing it off let's go for it and see if we can remove another one so cyrus is going to go after the uh with the glimmering wand the zealot again and let's do this let's go ahead and roll the die and see how we do hopefully we get enough to just finish it off Two successes, that's pretty clean. We'll input that into the app and then we're gonna see if that's enough. Two successes being added in. We'll go ahead and hit confirm and oh, it looks like it did it. That's awesome. Your foe crumples to the ground, remove the zealot. We'll hit continue. We now only have one enemy coming back at us. Inside the app, we're gonna hit end phase and we move to the darkness phase and I've removed the zealot off the board as well. We now resolve infection and terror. We don't currently have any and it says that each hero may discard one fatigue, which I definitely want to do. We have none on Varix, but we definitely have a bunch on Cyrus. Strategy wise, this decision is pretty obvious. We have three on one card, which is maxed it out. We have one on a two maximum for the hero card. So we might as well take off this one right here, giving us the ability to use that in power even more so in the future plus a quick ready action would deal with all the fatigue on the glimmering wand back inside the app we're going to hit continue and it states the berserker is going to be targeting cyrus it's a bloodlust as after the defense the berserker shifts one toward and attacks a second hero if possible that's not gonna be possible because we made sure to keep ourselves spaced out so that oh my gosh look at the damage it's up to eight now. That is crazy. That is a substantial amount of damage. And he is right next to Varix right now. And four movement, one, two, three, four, would put him adjacent to Cyrus. So he can definitely make it over there. That is a very, very nasty attack. So we're going to take a orange die here to roll to negate as much damage as possible. This could be, this could be really, really bad. <laughs> That's a lot of damage. Okay, we got two successes and we have one uh, advantage. So that's nice, I guess. Uh, can we use our empower here? Yeah, after we roll, convert one to two. So I could use a fatigue right now and that will give me a total of four successes, which I'm definitely gonna do. I'll put a fatigue over here for Cyrus. 
and uh, that will negate four of it, so four damage coming through to Cyrus. That, my friends, was a big time hit. He is down to two health total. Back inside the app, we're gonna go ahead and hit done, and actually we'll go back one step here because it states for blood loss after the defense, the Berserker shifts one to a right. So that is not gonna happen because shifting of one, he can't get to anybody, so we can go right past that. The Berserker howls, uh, wide eyes gazed at Varix with unfathomable rage. Okay, so at least it's giving us a little bit of a heads up as to what it might be doing. The app will do this, and I'm guessing on further difficulties, that kind of stuff does not happen. Plus, I know from experience on harder difficulties, the app will throw in some serious curveballs after your attacks, which is quite interesting. We'll go ahead and hit continue, and we're back inside the next hero phase. It's also going to save inside the app to make sure that everything's kept saved currently. I'm going to have Cyrus activate first, and I'm going to have Cyrus go ahead and use an action to ready the Glimmering Wand. We're going to flip it over to the other side. This will get rid of all three fatigue tokens on top. For my next action, I'm going to go ahead and definitely do an attack here. Heading inside the app, we're going to go ahead and drag the Portrait of Cyrus over to the Berserker. We're going to be using the Crooked Staff, so we'll click on that. Now we're in the battle screen. We need to roll our attack die, which is an orange die. So we'll do that right now. Let's go ahead and see how this pans out. We got ourselves a surge and a success. This wasn't exactly the attack we were looking for. It's a little bit less. I was hoping to get one of the advantage icons so I could convert it with a fatigue token placed on my hero card. But it looks like we'll just have one success. I could use the surge from down here, which allows me to add another success, giving me two. And you may move one fatigue from one card to another. So what I think I'm going to do is move the fatigue from the hero card over to the crooked staff. So we're going to jump inside the app. We're going to place two in here. We have no status to add. The confirm is going to drop it down by six damage. So we still haven't figured out a weakness just yet. And I've already gone ahead with Cyrus and done one attack as well as one ready. So the only thing I have left to do is a maneuver. We know right now, based on the game board, that Cyrus is impeded being next to the enemy. So when I try to actually go ahead and do a maneuver, I instead just get one movement point instead of his allotted typical four. So I'm just going to move north one space. All right, Cyrus's turn is now complete, and it's up to Varix in order to do some more damage to this thing. All right, so Varix, I'm going to go ahead and have him move first. Now, I wasn't planning on heading south, but it's a quicker path to the enemy this way. So we're going to move three spaces towards the enemy around the body of water. And this works out perfectly because I have reach on my river watch spear, so I can actually reach and attack this thing at two spaces away. Also, I could have gone through the water, but getting through the water and still being able to have range on this enemy, I would have burned a, a maneuver action and then another maneuver action to get close enough to just do one attack, whereas with this movement, I've done one and I have the ability now to fight twice, hopefully, or attack twice, which hopefully should give me enough to be able to take it down before it activates. Back inside the app, Varix is going to go ahead and make an attack. We will highlight that. It says to select currently equipped weapon, and I'm going to go ahead and select Riverwatch Spear, which is what's currently equipped. At this point, it states Anger. This enemy's damage is permanently increased by one. That definitely doesn't sound good at all. So I guess the more we're interacting with this individual, the worse this damage is getting over time. I'm hoping the damage type for my current weapon is going to be a weakness on this guy, but we will see. Let's go ahead and roll a die. We're rolling the blue die here for Varix. Let's see what we get. We have just a surge. Actually, that's not bad because the Riverwatch Spear here actually allows us during our attack to add two successes and enfeeble an enemy. So that works out pretty awesome, even though we just got one surge. So I'll be doing just that in the app. We'll go ahead and place one, two hits, and we'll put a status of enfeebled. And there we go. Confirm. Is that enough? No, but we did find that it was one of its weaknesses. So now we have a really good chance of taking this thing out. So that's awesome. And we're going to do another attack right now. So we're going to drag this back over. We're going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to have the Riverwatch Spear doing its damage from distance. We need to go ahead and roll a blue die. This should do it. We should be able to clear out the enemy. And oh my gosh, I got another surge. Sorry about that. It's just a little bit out of camera there. But that is another single surge, which again, I can go ahead and do the exact same thing inside the app. So two hits, 
and it's already got that condition on it. We confirm the attack, and that is going to be eight damage, wiping it out. The foe crumples to the ground. We now remove the Berserker. Now, when we hit continue, something changes inside the app. You're gonna notice it now states the clouds over the moon part, illuminating the clearing. A, a watchtower stands not far away. Place one archway, one chest, one door, and one well. Here are those items now set up on the game board. Quite an interesting sight to see a gigantic archway in the distance, as well as a chest sitting out in the open we can interact with, and a well. These are all things, including the trees, that I still want to explore. Back inside the app now, we'll go ahead and hit continue as we've gone ahead and put everything we need to into position. And it states the object has been updated. We need to enter the watchtower at this point. Well, as long as there isn't too many enemies around, I am going to take my time here and loot as much things as I possibly can here. Now it states on the app, some tokens and terrain can give you a clue as to what is inside or what attribute you'll need to test. Tap on them to get a preview of what could lie within. Try tapping on the chest or the well to learn more about them. So let's actually go ahead and do that. So if we tap on the chest, it states, a well-crafted lock holds the chest closed. You will need a deft hand to manipulate the tumblers and open the lid. So again, this is going to give you clues as to what type of test it could potentially be so you can hopefully put the right character in front of that chest to give you better odds of pulling it off. So we also have, in terms of different uh, attributes for skills, we have might, agility, insight and will so i'm guessing agility is going to be pretty high up on the list for this chest if we go over to the well it states the water shimmers inviting the weary to taste interesting doesn't tell us too too much there but again if we're weary it's inviting so maybe cyrus being that he's down to two health maybe this will rejuvenate him i hope worst case oh, i guess the worst case scenario could be is he gets a really bad condition out of it so i got to be careful in my selections here but we're not even close to those items just yet we still need to do some traveling and technically as of right now i have used all of my actions and the hero phase is done so we're gonna go ahead and hit end phase and i don't believe we're gonna have to do too much beyond just some management of the fatigue and potentially a couple conditions which we don't currently have right now so it states time passes resolve infection and terror we don't have any each hero can discard one fatigue that's awesome so i'll be taking the final fatigue off of cyrus's crooked staff and i have no fatigue whatsoever on varix the app will go ahead and hit continue and it now states hero phase and i can choose which hero i want to start with to begin this current round i'll start things off with cyrus seeing as he's literally beside a tree already to begin so he's going to interact with the tree using an explore action inside the app We simply drag the portrait of the character towards the thing we want to interact with so in this case Cyrus towards the tree and it states the tree has round green fruit on the lower branches plants and mushrooms growing up its side and a sturdy trunk you could climb Ooh, that's interesting. So we could climb the tree. That's quite tempting as well. I believe that, that likely would take into account agility would be my guess, but we have might, insight, and will as well. But my agility is a minus one on the success side of things to start. So it's not the greatest, but we always get two skill dice when doing these. Uh, pick the fruit. That could be beneficial seeing as Cyrus is really weak. Maybe the fruit could help restore some health or we could forge the plants. We could go after and try to gather as many of the plants for potentially crafting later on. Oh, that's a tough choice. Um, and again, I'm just trying to guess at what these potentially could be. So I think what I'm going to do is I might go ahead and go after the plants and maybe wait until the well for Cyrus. So let's go ahead and forage the plants. So we do this around the tree looking for anything of interest. The following has been added to your inventory to be used later. Five leather, six minerals from some mangy furs, four herbs from some shadow side moss. So it shows all down below all the things that we just gathered from that tree. So if we go ahead and hit continue, the tree obviously still stays there, but if we go into the selection at the bottom and go into our inventory, you'll see the materials listed here as well as consumables, armor, trinkets, weapon parts, and all that good stuff along down here. So this is a good, I, this gives you a good idea as to what you're basically have as a party overall. And we also have gold at the very top too, but currently we're very poor. 
All right, so that is going to be that action. For the next action, I think it's time to head to that well. Cyrus has four movement when doing a maneuver action, so that will easily put him next to the well. Cyrus sprints over there, and he's going to use his last action to explore and interact with this well. So let's head inside the app. We'll go ahead and drag the portrait for Cyrus up to the well, and it states the old well exudes hints of natural power. Well, that sounds really good. So we can either just drink it, we can try to extract essence, or we could toss a coin. But what's really cool is you'll notice the toss a coin option's not even available for us because remember when we checked our inventory, we don't have coins to toss. So you can't do that, but it's something we could do if we had it. Now, maybe if we actually interact with the chest first and it was to give us coins, we could come back over and toss a coin in. So that might be a thought as well. For now, I think just having him try and drink it and just cross our fingers this is actually gonna heal him up would be the beneficial choice here. Although extracting an essence also sounds really good too and could also lead to a healing potion or something, but I don't really know. So let's go with the drink because that sounds like the best option right now. All right, so it says, you drink deeply from the waters, you may discard two fatigue from each of your cards. No, this is not what I wanted in that particular case. So unfortunately, it, it does help, or it would have helped, but I have no fatigue on any of my cards anyway, so that's not gonna work out for me. So we'll go ahead and hit continue. So at this point, I'm assuming those other options are still available. I might still wanna interact with things, but for Cyrus, his turn's over. We'll now move over to Varix, who wants to interact with the other tree and get a little closer to that archway. All right, so Varix is actually gonna to head to the west in order to get closer to the tree. He's likely gonna to need to do two maneuver actions to get to where he wants to go. So let's go ahead and do just that. So I used five movement points of the six that I get allotted for using two maneuver actions, which give me three movement points each. So I have one more remaining, but I'm stopping on purpose to do another action in order to interact with this tree and explore and search it. So after I'm done with that action, I can then use the remainder of my movement points for the additional move. Heading back inside the app, Varix is gonna go ahead and interact with the tree on the far left. The tree has round green fruit on the lower branches, plants and mushrooms growing up its side, and a sturdy trunk you could climb. So we have similar options on this side. Now, this time around, I'm kind of tempted to pick the fruit because maybe we'll actually get something consumable wise that could help us and again help Cyrus is what I'm trying to get because he's only got two health currently. So we'll pick the fruit. It says you pick one of the low hanging fruits off the tree and as you bite into it, it has a sweet taste, a little tart at the end. You feel revived, heal too. Well, guess what? It looks like Varix is stealing that health. The good news is at least he has one damage. He dropped from eight to seven during combat. So at least he gets to go back up to full health. While I think Cyrus is looking at him with quite an upset expression on his face. So heading back inside the app, we're now gonna go ahead and end the phase. I wanna make mention that I have moved Varix one position to the east to finish out his movement points he had available. We'll go ahead and hit end phase. Darkness phase is now commencing. We're gonna check for infections and terror. We don't have it. Each hero can discard a fatigue. We don't have any, so we'll just go ahead and continue. And we're back to the hero phase. Things are pretty easy at this stage in the game. Now that I know exactly what can happen at the tree in terms of the fruit, I'm thinking I'm gonna go ahead and have Cyrus go back to the other tree and pick some fruit to get some health back. So he's gonna move four towards that other tree. But first, before he does, I wonder if he should go ahead and explore and interact with the well one more time. So taking a look inside the app here, we're gonna take Cyrus, drag it over to the well and interact with it. You'll see that drinking's not an option anymore. Tossing a coin isn't an option, but we can still extract an essence. So let's go ahead and do that because I feel like that's gonna be a good thing. We do have to test our insight, however. Our insight on Cyrus is actually a plus two success to start. And I'm gonna be rolling two black dice to add on top of that. So hopefully we can really get up there with the successes. Let's see how it goes. We got ourselves four successes here on top of the two successes that are already on the hero card for a total of six so in the app one two three four five and six and we'll continue sending waves of heat and power down into the well you pull hidden essences into your palm even as the structure collapses inward the following has been added to your inventory to be used later we have one aquos and two embros that's pretty awesome so some more uh, you can go back into the inventory here which is what i want to do to see what these things actually are it says a magical essence of shadow dark formless and unknowable 
And then this one is a magical essence of water flowing, overwhelming, and ever-changing. So I'm sure those are going to come in real handy later on. So now let's do our movement and head over to that other tree. So as you can see, Cyrus has now made it back to the other tree and has one more action to spend, which he'll use in order to interact with the tree. And hopefully the fruit that's on it will heal him up. Inside the app, we're going to drag Cyrus to that tree and we're going to choose to pick the fruit. And yes, indeed, we can heal too. So we'll be bumping him up from two to four. That was definitely needed. All right, over to Varix, who's going to beeline it over to that chest. So with three movements, he can go one, two, three, and he would need to do another maneuver action to get enough movement points to get over to the chest. So two actions needing to be spent there. And just like that, he has arrived at the chest with his final action. He is definitely going to go ahead and interact and explore that chest and we got to try to see if we can actually get into it first. Back at the app here, we're going to go ahead and move it so we can see the chest. We're going to have Varix interact with it. It states, a well-crafted lock holds the chest closed. You will need a deft hand to manipulate it. Test agility. That's exactly what I thought we'd be testing. It's funny because both my characters are actually pretty terrible at agility. Cyrus is minus one, although he's not part of the equation. But Varix is actually a zero. So we get no extra bonuses. We just get what we get on the dice. So hopefully I get what I need off this roll here. So here we go. We got ourselves four successes this time, so let's go ahead and put that into the app. One, two, three, and four. Hopefully that's enough. You are closer to opening the chest, but there is still some effort required. So we're gonna have to keep working at this, but at this point in time, we are now done in terms of the hero phase. We're burnt out on actions, and we're gonna go ahead and end the phase. At this point, we can also burn away fatigue. We don't have to worry about resolving any of this stuff. We're right back into the hero phase. And honestly, I'm really tempted seeing as Cyrus is right next to the tree to actually have him go first and interact with it. So staying inside the app, we're going to go ahead and have Cyrus actually climb the tree because I want to see what happens. Maybe we can see things in a di from a distance or maybe there's something high up in the tree we're talking about. It says you prop your foot on a low branch in an attempt to leverage yourself into the tree. We have to test our might. Our might on the hero card is minus one success. We're going to roll two dice and see what we can do to manipulate that. Oh, we got five this time, but five minus the one from might ends up just being four. We'll input four into the app. Hopefully that is enough. You try to pull yourself up, but your foot slips and you fall backwards. You are unhurt except for maybe your pride. Uh, okay, so that didn't work. So maybe it's not really worth spending too much time trying to climb this, but if we had a character that was really good at agility, might be a good idea. I don't think that's going to be something we should continue to try and make happen. So let's go ahead with the last two actions for Cyrus and just head towards maybe the archway. So I'm going to use with Cyrus both my last actions are going to be maneuver actions in order to get enough points of movement to get me right adjacent to the doorway. I'm going to leave the chest for Varix to continue working on. All right, so Varix is now going to activate. Pretty happy to just interact with the chest. So inside the app here, we're going to go ahead and we're going to drag the portrait over to the chest. We're going to have to do a test of agility. We do know we get no bonuses for agility with Varix currently. So we're going to go ahead and roll our dice and see if we get enough successes to push this forward we got ourselves sorry that just is not on camera it was a four and we'll go ahead one two three and four and hit continue inside the app the following has been added to your inventory to be used later 19 herbs wow from some glooming uh mold and 19 herbs from some devil's pollen heavy bracers recipe also Ooh, that sounds pretty good so we'll go ahead and hit continue and you'll notice that the chest gets removed completely all right with the chest now gone we can go ahead and do a maneuver action to get moving towards the gate and then we could potentially interact with it if we so choose now the only thing i'm thinking of is that if i move towards a gate and then instantly interact with it if there are enemies on the other side of it we're moving right into a darkness phase right away which puts me in a really bad spot so i think what i'm going to do is basically burn my actions. I'm gonna pretend as though I'm using them for both maneuver, which is a completely valid. I'm gonna run circles around and just stop myself right in front of the gate and end the hero phase there. And then we'll open the door at the beginning of the next hero phase. 
So heading back inside the app, we're going to go ahead and end the phase. Darkness phase goes. Nothing here should change in terms of what we've seen before. And now we go back to the hero phase. We have our full ability to choose to have our characters be at the forefront of this attack as we go through the door. So who is going to make the first move? Well, seeing as Cyrus is the most with has the most damage associated to him, let's not put Cyrus in the front. We'll have Varix uh, actually go ahead and interact with the archway first. So heading inside the app, we're going to go ahead and the portrait for Varix is going to interact with this door right here. The stench of death and stale blood overwhelms you. There is something foul beyond this door. Varix stands firm against the stench as they push their way in. We're testing Will 5. Okay, so we got to see whether or not we pass or fail this. So if we're testing our Will, if I take a look at Varix, he actually has a plus two. So that's better than Cyrus, a plus one so that's great we have two rated of the gates we just need to get three on this roll so here's hoping that pans out for us and we got three plus we got a surge but we're not going to need to use it now i'll take a quick look around to see if there's anything we can use but uh no most of the surge abilities right now are going to well actually uh, we could we could use a surge ability on our hero card here that adds, adds another success and any hero may discard one condition but we don't have any conditions so it could have been good doesn't help us right now so four successes on top of the two that we have already for will is going to be six which is way beyond five so we definitely pass this so we'll go ahead and hit pass on the app and the door gives way to your efforts we now remove the door and at this point, things begin to expand. It states here, maps frequently have multiple levels of elevation. When placing tiles that are elevated, you've got support beams. So basically, they're going to be slotted onto these tiles. You can choose to use either all of them with the gargoyle showing in terms of where you slot them in or the side of the support pillars that don't have the gargoyle. Just make sure you keep it uniform across to keep the actual platform level overall. So it's telling us here, place tile 16A, four short pillars and one staircase. Here's how things look on the table right now. They're about to change quite a bit. Here are how things look currently based on what the apps told us to place. And we're going to go ahead back inside and see what else there is. We'll hit continue inside the app as we set this all up now. And it states to place two doors and one staircase next. The two doors and the staircase have been placed. Let's head back inside the app and see what else there is, if anything. We'll hit continue inside the app and it states a heavy gate is locked with four locks. Place one gate. So we'll go ahead and be placing a gate. We'll hit continue. It states to spawn the following enemies. We have a zealot. The heavy gate and the zealot have been placed as it's asked for in the app. We'll head back inside the app and hit continue to see what else there is. The objective is updated to now find the keys to the gate and there's four of them it appears. It's zero four that objective. So we're gonna have to do some hunting here. With one zealot standing watch in the hallway, it appears we have three doors, one of which being a giant gate has four locks on it. Our objective is to get the keys. We have two other doors we're likely going to have to explore through. And we just began a hero phase where Varix was able to open the door with the first action. So we have two actions remaining with Varix and we have not activated Cyrus yet. But at this point in the playthrough, we are going to stop here for part number one. Join me as as we explore under the archway and into this dungeon area together in the next episode. Really hope this helps you get an informed idea as to how this game flows, how it plays, and the rules around it. And we haven't even touched on all the major actions yet. Things like the hero conditions we haven't seen fully, like infections, terror, scars, prepare, and focus conditions, all of those nasty conditions that can impact the heroes we haven't had to deal with just yet, but guaranteed they're going to start coming out of the woodwork real soon and then we also haven't had the ability yet to do any kind of unique actions which have that arrowhead signified beside them and i'm assuming that as we craft things gain different items upgrade the ones we have starting gear all that kind of stuff we're going to get access to cards that allow us to do unique actions on them as well so that is going to officially wrap things up for part number one really hope to see you in the next episode as we venture further into what what we have just opened up under this archway together. Thanks again for watching, and as always, keep on rolling solo!